In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a 3D model of a jack-o'-lantern. If you haven't already, create a Tinkercad account and watch some of the tutorials under the Learn tab on the Tinkercad website. To start creating your jack-o'-lantern, create a duplicate of the jack-o'-lantern stand provided in Beanstack. And give it a new name so you have your own workspace. By right clicking and dragging the work plane, you can see different angles of the shape. And here are some basic shapes, but we're gonna start with something in the all shapes shape generator. They have tons of different shapes to choose from. We're gonna start with this high res sphere on page five and resize it so it's about 15 millimeters by 15 millimeters by 20 millimeters tall and duplicate it to make it like a Venn diagram. Group and rotate it by 90 degrees. Then duplicate that shape with control D and rotate it 45 degrees. Then group that together and you have a pumpkin. I'm going to make my pumpkin a little bit taller and narrower. And then see how it looks on the stand to make sure he's about the right size that I want. If you hold shift and size up, it will uniformly size the whole shape. Then I'm going to create a duplicate of the pumpkin and make it a little bit smaller by holding shift and resizing. So you can see I have two pumpkins. I'm going to align them to center. and make the smaller pumpkin on the inside a hole so that we can cut out the inside of the pumpkin. Again, under that all shapes, I'm gonna use this P ring as a stem and this box hole to cut off all the extra parts that I don't want. Then group those together and you have your stem. I'm going to position it on the pumpkin so it's in the top center, but I think that stem is a little bit too large for my little pumpkin so I'm going to hold shift and make it a little bit smaller and put it right in the middle. I think that looks good. So now I'm going to group those three shapes together so that the hole cuts out the inside of the pumpkin and the inside of the stem. And I'm going to make it orange because pumpkins are usually orange. Now we're going to make the face for the jack-o'-lantern. I'm going to use triangle shaped eyes, but you can use whatever shape you please. Once I have it to a size that I kind of like and a shape that I like, I'm going to create a duplicate with that control D function and group them together so that they're two eyes. Make them a hole so that they will cut out of the pumpkin and put them on the front of the pumpkin where I want them to be. 
I think those eyes look a little too big, so I'm going to make them a little smaller by holding shift and sizing them down. If you hold control and move the arrow keys up or down, you can move along the Z axis. But otherwise, if you move your arrow keys, you're just going to move along the Y and X axes. You could use the round roof to create a round mouth, but I'm going to use this polygon shape to create a crooked kind of mouth. Use that square hole and then cut that off. And then I'm going to create the teeth, which I'm going to make square teeth, but you could make triangle shaped teeth or crooked teeth, however you like. I'm going to position the teeth so they'll cut out of this shape. And this is where it's a matter of preference. You gotta kind of figure out what you like and mess with it until it looks the way you want it to look. You get to be creative. Those top teeth are a little too close together so I'm gonna just spread them out so he has more of a gap tooth smile and then I'm gonna group them and make that whole shape a hole rotate it by 90 degrees and position it on the pumpkin and you can kind of see what the face is gonna look like before you cut it out you can change it or you can just go with it like I did. I think that's kind of a goofy gap tooth smile and I like it. So now I'm gonna cut a hole in the bottom where the light for our jack-o'-lantern is gonna pop through. And the size of our stand is 12 millimeters by 12.55 millimeters. So I'm gonna use this cylindrical hole Line it to the center of the pumpkin, and then group so that it cuts out that bottom hole on the pumpkin for the light to come through. Now I'm going to cut off the lid of the pumpkin just like a real jack-o'-lantern. So I'm going to use this square hole again, this box hole, cover the whole pumpkin, and then duplicate the hole and the pumpkin. And then take this duplicate box hole and make it just so that they're meeting each other above the eyes. And I'm going to hide that top box. Then I'm going to group one pumpkin with one box, show the other box, and group that box with the other pumpkin until you have the top and bottom of the pumpkin. It looks like I have a little bit of extra material on that part. So I'm just going to ungroup that one. Make sure I cover the whole pumpkin with the box hole. And then regroup it together so that it's just the lid by itself. Now I can position my jack-o'-lantern on the stand with the align function. So he fits right on there. And then I'm gonna create a little lip on the inside of the lid so that it fits on the jack-o'-lantern and kind of stays there. So I'm gonna use this cylinder 
and since my lid's about 22 millimeters by 22 millimeters, I'm gonna make it three millimeters smaller on each side and three millimeters tall. And then align these so that it fits right on there. I like the way that fits. I think it needs to be a little bit shorter, so I'm gonna make that bottom cylinder two millimeters instead of three millimeters tall. And then make it so that they fit together and then group them. Okay, now I just have to group my jack-o'-lantern to its stand. and change that back to orange since it changed to white. And then I'm going to export the lid as an STL and the jack-o'-lantern as an STL. Then these will appear in my download folder and I can open them in the slicing software.